Fusion is an old program, 25 years, right? It's been used in thousands of films. It was owned by a company called Ion, and Ion was the king of no marketing. So <laughs> essentially, it was a secret. If you knew it, you bought it, you loved it. $5,000, generation $5,000, optical stereo workflow $4,000, the whole bit. It's now that whole package is our studio for 1000 And the free one pretty much has everything the regular Fusion, the $5,000 one had. It's still trying to grasp that. <laughs> I, you know, it happens now that I'm not in production anymore. It was just, you know, I would have loved that. The tools are coordinate based and percentage based. So if you were to blur something that's 1K or 50K, the result just looks exactly the same. This allows you to go from 8K or 1K to 8K without having to retool you know, every single thing in your, in your compositions. Um, we do also now ship with a lot of presets and we're building more and more. Uh, that's something that Fusion has never had in the past, so it would be a blank slate. So we do have particle examples and when I'm, I'm done with my demo, I'll show you some of these. And uh, from popular demand, we have animated text templates from 3D, Chrome, to flip and rotate, and all that kind of stuff. So uh, definitely been uh, helpful to get you started. OK, so I'm actually just going to start uh, building a clip uh, foreground background comp, and then I'm going to upgrade it to 3D so you guys can get a sense of how uh, Fusion works in 3D space. Now, uh, background foregrounded nodes, Fusion does not care where they're located. It's not a game of water falling down a hill or any of that stuff. We have colors. Orange is background, green is foreground. You can line them up any way that you like. And nodes connect by, um, by priority. So background is always the first thing you're going to put in. So you don't actually have to aim for anything. It knows you can't do anything until you have a background. And then the next thing you're going to do is put a foreground because you can't put a mask. If you don't have a foreground, you have nothing to mask. And so Fusion just connects them for you. Now, that's a basic foreground background composite in notes. Right? It's very, very simple. We have a timeline that represents the keyframes and you know, all that kind of stuff. Don't have keyframes yet, but we will uh, very shortly. Uh, now, let me show you how Fusion does 3D. We do that by adding image planes. So what I just did is sh uh, shift space. And this brings up our new tool selector. And you just basically start typing. And in this case, I'm going to type image plane. And the image plane is there. This creates a 3D environment for this particular object. OK, so we've got that little environment. They're both in exactly the same place. So let's go ahead and use the UI. We no longer care about that. I can just start working in here and grab things and use their controls and move them back. Or you can go in here and you know, use these controls and say, you know, I'm put negative four or five. OK, so we've positioned it you know, far, far out. And now we could just scale it up. And that gives us our new sort of composite, right? Get parallax and do all sorts of cool stuff. Everything you see is in front of you. There's no sort of hidden list or whatever. It's just, there's just tools in front of you. And once you get over the, the fact that you need layers, and in 3D, you just don't need layers. Really, you just, it's a room, and you, know, you build your room. So this is just a window I download, to be honest with you, I downloaded from the internet you know, for this demo. And all it is really is a window that I found online. And I created an alpha channel, you know, just cut out some squares. We now have a three-layer parallax, right? So that was easy to do. I just had to place it in, in visual space. You can see now we actually have real parallax in the window itself with its frame and the whole bit. OK, so you go to the camera. And the cameras now have um, a little thing that we can display. And it's called plane of focus. And that's our, our little green box. That's our plane of focus. Now, as I adjust that plane of focus, so for instance, right now it's at the back. So as I move that plane of focus forward, we change our focal point, And we have our foreground focus in focus our window in focus, or our city in focus. OK, so now look at that. All right, isn't that cool? I call it a top-down mentality. I just start building from the top. And if I run into something I, don't, I can't do, then I ask for an element. 
right? As opposed to like building the nuts and bolts of a helicopter, spending six months, millions of dollars, you get it to me, and I put a big puff of smoke in front of it. Well, let's start with a sphere. I'll put a big puff of smoke in front of it, and then you say, okay, I really don't need the helicopter, right? That's sort of the mentality. So I've only got a few minutes, so I'd like to actually maybe do some eye candy, show you guys some of the stuff that we could do. Here's a great example, just some blowing leaves. That's it, all right? Very straightforward. All I have is an emitter that has a, thump, that has a leaf as, a, you know, as, as the brush. And I basically set the direction. So I have a little animation of the direction sort of fluctuated. Uh, I should say the strength, but if I do change the direction, you'll see it'll all sort of go somewhere else. Then we have a vortex, which makes them spin, and that's it. And this is the render speed for them. I'm always asked, can you make smoke? Do you have smoke? We need smoke. So I have a little particle pass that makes the smoke. But the only difference is, is I have it just coming out of a sphere. Isn't that cool? So now I could change and look at the top. I can look at the bottom. I can set this up any way I want and have my smoke pass. Cool? We finish on a high note? Yeah. Thank you.